In the mid-1990s, Rwanda was a nation engulfed by genocide, as almost 800,000 people, mostly Tutsis, were murdered by the Hutu majority. It was into this chaos that Stefan Grenu was thrust, and after nine months of service, he then returned home, not knowing he was suffering from PTSD. Well, at the time when I came back home, I felt I was excited to be home and, and all the rest of it. I hadn't seen my family in so long. Uh, so my mental state, I thought it was fine, right? But unbeknownst to me, when I opened the door, I saw my kids in pajama. I just collapsed to my knees. Now, that should have been a sign, but it wasn't a sign because I just thought, I'm tired, right? So it's interesting how sometimes we think we're well, but we're not well, and we only figure it out years later, really. Without a complete support system available to him, Grenier would find himself reach an absolute low, contemplating how best to position a rifle in his mouth to ensure death. The topic of suicide is not talked about a lot. It's a bit taboo in our society. And I believe some Canadians will think when somebody kills themselves or commits, not commits, but takes their life by suicide, uh, it must be because they're despaired or they're dramatic or they're really unwell. It's interesting because when I came close to dying by suicide, I felt none of that. I felt in control. I felt like this was the solution. It made a lot of sense, right? And so, of course, there had been a lot of ups and downs and a lot of questioning. But when you're at that state, there's been a lot of thinking. You've thought it through. And it's, a, you know, for me, it was a very deliberate process, as opposed to what popular belief is, which is a, an act of impulse, right? Very calculated for me. Luckily for Grenier, he serendipitously stumbled upon the piece that, for him, was missing peer support, the connection with another human being that has been through the same path that may be a little further advanced in their recovery than me and allowed me to understand that I wasn't alone and maybe one day I can be recovered like them. And that phenomena is what we need to crowdsource in Canada. That's what my company is doing. We're crowdsourcing that and we're working with Corporate Canada to help. So, you know, for those CEOs out there who want to do something very different, transformational, there are solutions to this. And you know what? I've never met a human being in workplaces that has been through this issue, that has recovered, that doesn't want to help somebody else. So the irony is that every company, every organization in this country already has in place on their payroll today people who are willing and able to help. Grenier believes that he has the method to make it happen in a safe and accountable way, having already helped to change how the Canadian forces deal with mental health issues, implementing and managing a peer support program, and coining the term operational stress injury as part of his plan to demedicalize the mental health education sphere. The term injury, I think, uh, achieves a few things. One, it allows every human being around this, this, this person who is injured uh, to understand that you know, an injury, you can recover from an injury. And a layperson like me can understand that if, if my, my coworker is injured, then there's a pos potential that he, can, he or she can bounce back from that. More importantly, I know, I can relate to somebody who's been injured, right? And I, I can support that. If you have a disorder or, a, you know, if the language doesn't change and, and I feel that my, my fellow worker has a disorder, I'm thinking, I don't know what to do with a disorder. People who go to work every day unless you're in a hospital, they're, they're not clinicians. So as we continue to provide information for Canadians, we need to demedicalize that information. If we keep talking about symptoms and, 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 and diagnoses and, and things of that nature, that's good for doctors with patients. But as human beings who are not clinicians, we need to interact at the human level. And all we need to understand is how can I support another human being going through hardship? So that's not a diagnosis, and it doesn't need to be a symptom. It's, I'm going through a rough time, right? And so we really need to demedicalize, and I think that was achieved in my past workplace as well. For more information about how Stéphane Grenier is hoping to improve workplace wellness via his company Mental Health Innovations, or for information about his book or public speaking engagements, visit stephangrenier.com. James Spaulding, Halton News.